Yesterday, Africa, Sicily, and Italy were little more than colorful far distant places that to most Americans existed only in geography books, in the well-thumbed picture postals commemorating Aunt Harriet's one grand tour abroad. Today, global war has turned most of these lands into a battlefield. Overnight, ancient cities became familiar ground to men from Texas and Terre Haute, to boys from Brooklyn and Babylon, Long Island. This was a war world new and strange. A world of strange sights, strange people and strange languages. And men who had seldom been more than 50 miles from home suddenly looked up to find themselves at a crossroads they'd never dreamed of seeing. Imagine yourself a soldier or sailor in a foreign port with but a few fleeting hours of leave. Today, the most welcome spot in town is the building that houses the American Red Cross Service Men's Club. This is one of the centers where your Red Cross is serving your boys overseas. Imagine what hot showers and real American soap mean to men who haven't bathed in weeks. Only five minutes allowed to each soldier, and oh boy, does it feel good. There's even a rooftop barber shop complete with a suntan treatment that's strictly the original Mediterranean. Whenever the boys have time to relax, your Red Cross is there with reminders of home. Reminders like fresh melons, for instance, and don't ask where they got it. Wherever these friendly signs appear, men and women of the armed forces know the welcome mat is always out. Whether it's a tea party or plain old-fashioned American donut served by willing Red Cross workers, it all tastes mighty good when a girl's five or 10,000 miles away from what we smilingly call the good old USA. In the Empire Club alone, more than 22,000 servicemen have been known to visit the center in a single day. Signs of the times. Signs that tell your sons and daughters overseas that your Red Cross is at their side. Men on leave from the front may not find the Carlton here as lavish as its British or American namesakes, but in this neck of the woods, it's the brightest spot in town. It's things like providing writing paper for that letter home, finding a ping pong table for the boys, encouraging men to practice talents so apt to become dulled by war. Delivering hometown papers with news of Main Street and Broadway. And wherever it's possible, free movies, the latest features from Hollywood. You think this isn't important. Take a look at the line, not waiting for seats to Radio City, but waiting for one modest gob of real American ice cream. Realizing how much these little things mean and making them possible is just one way your Red Cross is serving overseas. For instance, promoting the ice that's in those glasses of lemonade is a Red Cross story in itself. But no matter what the effort, the pleasure that beams from the face of that one sailor is payment in full. Leave it to our Navy to dig up a band, a dance, and a partner. Next to being the greatest souvenir hunter in the world, the American soldier and sailor is also the most avid sightseer. Wherever possible, Red Cross workers plan trips to points of interest, 
arranged transportation without charge for servicemen eager to take home something more than just a fleeting impression of the country in which they find themselves fighting. What better tour amid the ruins of Pompeii than with a Red Cross girl showing the way? In every theater of war, Red Cross men cooperate fully with the Army, are under Army orders as to how close to the front they may operate. Wherever the Army goes, Red Cross field men and supply trucks are close behind. Headquarters for a week or a day may be an old warehouse. Following the flag isn't easy, and your Red Cross girls are a courageous lot. Setting up light housekeeping, very light, intense, they dig in just like the soldiers they are here to serve. One of their jobs is to try and give the men little things not included in regular army fare. So the club mobile, loaded with donuts and hot drinks, pulls out for the front. Glad to see the Red Cross truck? Well, rather. It isn't that the men are nuts about donuts, but when a couple of nice girls from the USA have come all the way up here to hand them out, brother, that means something to a soldier. It means a chance to talk with a girl from home, a girl like their own sisters and sweethearts, the pin-up girls they're fighting for. <laughs> Flying fortresses returning from a mission. General Arnold, chief of the Air Force, said that when possible, he wanted a Red Cross clubmobile to meet the crew of every returning bomber that even before reporting to headquarters, men back from a raid should be allowed to spend their first precious minutes talking and thinking of something less harrowing than the grueling experience that they've just gone through. Wherever this is possible, your Red Cross is there to greet these heroes upon their return. Through the ruins of cities and towns bombed and blasted by war, your Red Cross clubmobiles are covering the fighting fronts. Contacting a tank brigade bivouacked in the field, the girls open up the old refreshment stand and start passing it out. No post is too remote, no hour is too early or too late for your Red Cross workers to be on the job. To the sentry on duty all night, the appearance of a Red Cross crew is as welcome as the dawn. A convoy takes a brief rest along the road. No, it isn't a mirage. It's one of your Red Cross girls with some of that ice cream like they have back home. This is one of those things that just can't be measured in money or with words. This is a service from the heart, straight to the stomach, and it hits the spot. Show sure now. Your Red Cross field director is quite a guy, and he's quite a long ways from home. A combination information bureau and helper, he's the soldier's personal link with home. No matter how distant the outpost, he gets there. Sometimes he helps the army carry the mail, brings those messages from home that mean everything to the men out in the mud. He's a pretty popular guy at any time. But when he brings the mail, he's head man. His 
Your next stop may be a first aid station right up in the lines. And incidentally, these men of the Army Medical Corps, the litter bearers, are real heroes. Unarmed, these Army men, protected only by the international symbol of mercy, were constantly under fire. Here, your Red Cross field man brings a batch of phonograph records to the men, swaps them for the old ones the boys have played over and over. He came across some fresh fruit on the way up, so the boys get a break. Right up on the firing line now, your Red Cross field director sees an advance artillery battery in action. At the command cease firing, they open up on him. Light refreshments for the gun crew. Your Red Cross at his side. These films, made by a Red Cross cameraman serving with the 5th Army in Italy, bring you something of the daily drama of the Red Cross under fire. Working in the heat of battle, litter bearers of the Army Medical Corps bring the casualties back to frontline first aid stations. Here, life-giving blood plasma, your blood collected through your Red Cross, is saving countless lives. To clearing stations operating within sound of the guns come army ambulances bearing their steady stream of wounded. Here, heroic army doctors, the finest in the medical profession, and army nurses recruited by your Red Cross are working miracles in surgery and science. Working with the blood plasma that you gave, they are literally bringing back to life men who would otherwise be lost. Sometimes from two to ten pints are needed for a single patient. The need for more and more blood plasma was never more graphically portrayed than here in this tent, somewhere in Italy. Is that the stuff the Red Cross gets for us, Doc? Yes, son, through your Red Cross at home, Americans donated every pint. The grim, silent procession moves on from frontline station to better equipped hospitals in the rear, on to base hospitals out of the war zone, some back to America. For all wounded, this is the beginning of the highway to Blighty. Railheads Army Hospital trains stand ready to transport the wounded. Army doctors and nurses are always on hand to care for patients during the journey. Also serving at the train are your gallant Red Cross workers, 
Workers like smiling Esther Richards from San Francisco, the girl in the picture. Four weeks after these films were made, Esther Richards lost her life while under fire on the beachhead at Anzio. For the walking wounded, your Red Cross girls are on hand with food, candy, cigarettes, magazines. Army ambulances at air evacuation points await the more seriously wounded who are rushed back by aerial transport. From her tent on the field, your Red Cross girl has a hot drink and a sandwich ready for every patient. This is your Red Cross at his side. Day and night, at field and evacuation hospitals everywhere, the work of humanity goes on. A patient removed from surgery to make way for another is attended by a nurse who carries the blood plasma still flowing into the wounded man's life stream. The gallantry, the courage of these heroic army nurses is matched only by the men they serve. These are your nurses in action. Nurses recruited by your American Red Cross. lost all their belongings, their personal effects and action, the Red Cross presents emergency kit bags. Many of them are made by the youngsters of your Junior Red Cross. Here's a bag from Charleston, South Carolina, a mighty welcome gift to a soldier stranded in Italy without a razor or a toothbrush. Behind the lines, your Red Cross hospital workers serve in many ways so important to boys who can't help themselves. They are called on to write letters. They see that patients receive magazines. They encourage them to play games. They help send home souvenirs, souvenirs like the Purple Heart awarded to this boy for his wounds. Things like wrapping paper and string are scarce commodities in a war zone, but somehow, someplace, she finds it, and the package is on its way. The word has been passed along that there's entertainment over at the Red Cross tent, and there you find workers doing one of the greatest jobs of the war getting wounded men to laugh, getting men shocked and scarred by battle to forget themselves, if only for a while. That's our real service. Their prescription is, it's all for a laugh, and the American sense of humor is just what the doctor orders. Your Red Cross workers overseas are never far from the war itself. Here, a clubmobile unit finds an army construction gang repairing a bombed out railway yard. 
It isn't long before the girls have hot coffee and refreshments going down the line. day out, your Red Cross field directors are on the road, piloting their trusty jeeps over many a dangerous and shell-torn trail. Their job's to serve the men at the front, and they're on the job. Through your local Red Cross home service, they provide a two-way link between the man at the front and his family back home. Bring personal reassuring messages, such as the health of a very sick child the condition of an ailing wife. They take back emergency messages from the boys at the front, pass out cigarettes and the latest jokes from the states. Often when there's an alert, they're right there when the guns start blazing. Whenever our boys move forward to take their places in the lines, your Red Cross crews are there with a snack, a cup of hot tea or coffee, a cherry word, the sort of things that work wonders for men's morale. These are typical of the men and women of your Red Cross. They have been picked for their courage, their eagerness, their ability to serve. Men and women from all walks of life, they're trained for and entrusted with a sacred mission, to do for your boy the things you would do if you could be there. It is through these gallant men and women in the field that always your Red Cross is at his side. Mm -hmm.